All right, when we were looking at this earlier, as you said, you, we, we see that a bunch of these comets had energies here where they were just barely enough to be bound, but in these very parabolic orbits. So I obviously have to ask the question, we really found anything like not just there, but up here? Well, the answer is until very recently, no, or okay. at least the ones that were slightly up there were thought to be observational errors. Yep. Um, but there's now been, I think, two objects discovered which were clearly way up here. Now, that means if they were down here, they'd have some nice elliptical orbit like the short period right. comets. As they go up and up, the orbits get longer and longer. These right. ones here go out to about a light year, 660,000 yep. astronomical units. If it's above here, it's come from outside our solar system. Yeah, because it, clearly it's not bound by this energy. Yeah. So this is called an interstellar comet. And you kind of expect these things to exist because we know that we're losing lots of comets all the time. Yep. You know, all these comets in that big spike, yep. they, uh, they might get scattered to lower orbits or higher ones. Higher orbits, they disappear. Okay. So and every time a star comes past, we lose large numbers of comets from the Oort cloud. So our solar system is like trailing comets being thrown out. <laughs> we're, just, we're a teenager throwing our clothes around the room. A rubbish out the car window <laughs> or something like this. And presumably other stars have planets and maybe comet belts and maybe some of those are being thrown around. So, but because we found two, is this then getting, strengthening this idea that not only are comets common in our solar system, but others, but indeed are really far out there and can be thrown in and out. Yeah, so for a long time, including my most recent paper on the stuff, I was putting upper limits. And I said, we haven't seen these things. And it was getting a bit slightly worrying because if we assumed every other star had large numbers of comets similar to our and it was losing at the same rate we think ours are, then maybe we should have seen them. Yep. And now we have seen, well, two. Yeah. It's a bit hard to extrapolate very much. If extrapolating from 100 was dangerous, extrapolating from two is... <laughs> but we're it's two is better than zero. Yes. Um, and at least the first one of these things was a very weird one. Yep. So this is it, Oumuamua, yep. and spotted. Uh, now this looks like I don't, everything else is trailing. That's because the telescope is tracking this object. And it moves differently to the background stars. Yes. So to begin with, it would probably have seen as a dot that moved. And then once you know how much it's moving, you can then get the telescope to track yep. it, in which case all the background stars streak out, and this becomes a dot. Yep. And that makes it easier to spot these things once you know they're once there. Once you know they're there, yes. Yes. Um, and um, it's got an energy up here. So it, so it is drastically yeah. different than the energy levels of all these other long period ones. That's right. And that means it's in a hyperbolic orbit. Yep. Okay. And so here's its orbit. So it came in from way out of the plane and then sped off. And if it was um, in a parabolic orbit, it would probably have gone back more or less the way it was coming. Yep. But this one, being a hyperbolic orbit, is now heading off in a different direction. Yep. Which, and it was going faster here than it should be if it's in a parabolic orbit. Yep, okay. And all these things tell you it's actually got a positive energy. Yes. So it really has come from outside our solar system and just whizzed through and out the other side. So it's just a coincidence or pure random statistical luck that this got flung out of its star system, traveled through space, and went through ours? Well, what this is telling us is there must be a lot of things like this out there or traveling the space. Yeah, yeah, OK. Because it had to come, it came in pretty close into the sun. If it had come past over here, we wouldn't have seen it. Yep. Or over here, or somewhere That's else. True. So had these been predicted before to exist? Yeah, people had always thought, given how many comets we're losing, if you assume other stars are losing the same amount, yep. then the galaxy must be covered in yeah, a sea yeah. of comets wandering randomly around. The only question is, it would have to come so close for us to see it that yep. the odds were against it. Yep. Uh, but if you look long enough and hard enough, and if there are enough of them out there, we should see one and now two yep. that are going past. Now, the um, so energy is up here. So there's the comet energies, and there's... So it's, sig it's significantly different from these comet energies. That's right. And it's not non-observational error. It's yeah, definitely it's, it's real. and distinctly positive. Yep. Um, now, the really strange thing about it is its light curve. So what we're plotting here is how bright it appears to be. Yep. And you see it's actually 20 second magnitude, which is not exactly bright. No, it's not exactly bright, but it's, it's detectable as it clearly is. Yep. And what people would do is they saw when it first detected it was quite bright, which is why they detected it. Yep. And then it got really faint um, a bit later, but that's only like an hour later. Then it gets so, you, so, this, so this is in hours, right? Yes. So this is the 25th of October and then 
26 and 27. So this is only a span of eight hours of this object. Yeah. So it's being observed by a whole bunch of different very large telescopes, the very VLT, which is very, very large telescope, and then the Gemini telescopes. And, and what you see is the brightness drops, comes up, drops, and comes up, drops, and comes up on a sort of V-shaped pattern. Yeah, and it's quite regular. And it's also, obviously, this is, I mean, again, this is an hour or two that this is doing it. Yeah, so this is not because it's coming close to the sun an hour. It's taking you months to come into the sun and yeah, far away. Yeah. Now, this, either it's got blinking lights on it, or it's actually an elongated object. Okay. And so the idea is if it's very elongated, so something like a giant cigar, yep. as it spins around, we see more or less of it. Oh, OK. And so the brightness gets... So when the fainter. long part is facing us, we see more light. When this pointy it in the cigars at us, we see less light. So this is implying it's not only long, but spinning. Yep, and because the change in brightness is so extreme, if we go back to this, it's jumping around by you know, three magnitudes. Which is a lot. Which is a lot, that's a factor of you know, 20 or 30. And so that means it must be enormously elongated. Yep. Which is a bit weird. Because as I thought, we, you know, when we looked at some of these previous comets before, yeah, they were weird shaped, but A, they weren't that big to begin with, and B, they were still roundy. They weren't long. Now, it might not be that it's elongated. It could be that one side of it's painted really bright and the other side's painted really dark. Okay. But that's kind of hard to understand. Yep. So the simplest explanation is it's just very elongated. Um, so here's an artist's impression of it. But we well, don't know. It could just be a sphere with one side painted fluorescent right. pink and the Again, other side painted black. This is not a photo. This is what people think based on the model of that light curve. That's right. Um, simply because the brightness is changing yep. so much with this, this pattern. So that's one thing that's really weird. We've not seen any asteroids or comets in our own solar system which have such extreme brightness changes. And there, of course, only been two comets have actually had spacecraft to visit. Yep. So the rest could be shaped like this for all we know. But if they were, we'd expect to see these huge changes in brightness. Um, and we don't really. But we do think they well, are... It actually isn't much data because it's actually very hard to see the nucleus of the exactly. comet. Yeah, yeah. But we do think these are comets though, right? Yeah, I mean, it didn't really show tail or anything. That was too far out to really do very much That's of right. that. But with the second one, Borisov, they did see a bit of a tail that they thought. That's right. So, I mean, we don't really know if it's got ice. It's just an object. And we call it an interstellar comet because it's the closest thing to an orbit would be a long period comet. But yep. we don't actually know. I mean, it could be made of your putty or yep. spaghetti or something for all we know. We've got no actual detection of what it's made out of. Exactly. Um, there is another puzzle about it, though. Uh, now, comets, most objects, their orbits are very predictable. They're just following gravity. Yep. Now, comets don't quite do that. OK. The reason is because they're squirting gas out as they go, and they often yep. have a bit of a recoil when the gas squirts It acts out. as a little thruster, like a spacecraft. Yes. And these are called non-gravitational forces. Yep. And it means that comet orbits are a bit less predictable than the orbits of everything else. OK. So usually, compared usually, to like an asteroid or something like that. It's usually not a very big effect, but it does mean they don't end up going exactly where you thought they were going to. All right. But if you look at the orbit of uh, Muamua, um, so we have Earth, we, we have Jupiter. Yep. And it goes, as it goes out, you see it's not quite where it's expected to be. So okay. there's the expected trajectory, and there's the observed trajectory. So it's further, so it's more parabolic than predicted? It's more hyperbolic. It hyperbolic, seems to have curved sorry, yes, a little yes. bit more, yep. which could be because when it came close, it was outgassing, um, and that pushed it a slightly different path. I mean, this, this is not yeah. unexpected for comets. Um, but there's the two puzzling things about this. So one is its extreme elongation, and the other is the fact it's not quite going on the path it should be. Now, most people think that it's just a very elongated or maybe just one side very bright, one side very dark yep. um, comet. And the change in trajectory is because it squirted some gas out in one direction and that yep. acted like a rocket and pushed it a bit. Spin, yep. But there are some people who think this must be a sign of an alien, maybe it's an alien solar sail or some strange space draft or something like that. And of course, we can't really tell. That's right. But it does become interesting because we now think that, hey, comets, there's a lot of them on the outside of our solar system. We push some of them out and we think it's common. So naturally, we do expect this all to reverse happen and us to get it. And now that, as you said, we now have two, I guess the question is to find more of them. Yeah, so I think it tells us, in some sense, it's what we expected. Yep. We expected, given that our solar system has comets, 
perhaps, yeah. we're, perhaps we're typical. We don't know if other solar systems, well, we do know one or two other solar systems have comets. Yep. Uh, the beta um, pictoris, and we see the signs of comets and absorption coming in. Yep. So it could well be that most solar systems are comets, and that's kind of what you'd expect because the outer parts of most protoplanetary disks are going to have icy lumps in it. Yep. And these are going to get scattered out when giant planets form and move, and we now know that most solar systems have giant planets. That's right. So it's not un we can't see comets from anyone else, but it's not unreasonable they yep. should be yeah, there. Yep. And if they are there, they're going to lose some of them, just like we're losing some of them. Yep. And if they, every star in the galaxy is scattering comets as it goes, then there should be all these free floating comets wandering around, and every now and then one of them should come through the solar system. And we're seeing it now because we have more and more powerful yes. telescopes scanning the skies. As we talked about with the Kuiper Belt objects, this is exactly yeah. why. And these are actually designed to spot killer asteroids by and large. I mean, it was discovered by the Panastar yep. Telescope in Hawaii. And especially with the um, new telescopes coming online, we're going to be looking at larger regions of the sky with all these bigger detectors, the bigger CCDs, more and more sensitively. And so hopefully we should see more of these things. Great. And if we can actually intercept one with a spacecraft, that would be really interesting because that would actually give us a sample that's come from another sun. And so th is there an idea to try and intercept a comet like this? It's very hard because you won't see it coming until you don't get very much warning. I mean, normally space missions, it's like 10 years yes. from when you plan it. And if you wait 10 years, it's already been and gone. So you'd have to essentially build a mission and kind of have it... Sitting near the launch pad. Yeah, yeah, waiting either even in around the moon or somewhere. And then when you detect one, say, yep, that's what we want. So it might even be waiting in space, ready to fire off yep. uh, or on Earth. Um, and then you'd have to... These things are going very fast when they come through the solar yes. system. I mean, parabolic comets are fast. Halley's Comet was going so fast they couldn't get into orbit and they had to just fly past it. Yep. But a fly past should be doable. Getting into orbit or catching up with it would be very hard and bringing a sample back would be nearly impossible. With but at least, but at least taking images and taking data, you know, it's hard enough for uh, the uh, Rosetta probe and Philae lander to get on 67P, a non-very fast-moving comet. Yes, yeah, so these are going to be a formidable challenge, but the, the payoff would be great. It would.